Welcome to another unit in this course on economics. This time I'm going to talk about the so-called ISLM model. The ISLM model, as the name says, is basically the combination of the IS curve and the LM curve, whereas the IS curve has been all the equilibrium on the goods market and the LM curve was all the equilibrium on the money market. So if we combine both curves in a diagram, the IS curve, showing all the equilibrium in relation to interest rate and GDP on the goods market, and the LM curve as with all equilibrium on the money market, we get one point where the two curves intersect. And that's what we call the domestic equilibrium or the Higgs equilibrium. It's called domestic equilibrium because in this case, we still only have a closed economy. So we are having no foreign exchange included whatsoever. Well, that's basically everything regarding the simple version of the ISLM model there is. However, we could expand the whole model. So I'm writing the same thing in a simplified version up here. Then we can link this to the rest of different ec economic activities or markets. The first thing is, well, it's related to the goods market. So every point here, oh, sorry, here on the IS curve will reflect as in an equilibrium in a goods market. So if we transfer the overall, equ overall equilibrium here in the ISLM model to the goods market, this will signify automatically that here demand and supply also have to meet. In addition to the goods market, however, in this graph, we can also include our production function. And here we know the production function is actually linked to labor supply. So we know that a certain amount of labor is necessary to generate a specific GDP. So this links labor to GDP. Then in the upper left, we can include the real wage hyperbolas. What does this mean? Well, we can differentiate between nominal wages that's basically what you see in your account every month. That's here, the large W. However, you're not only interested in what you officially earn, but what you can buy with this. That's more or less the real value of your wage. That's wage divided by price level. So if you relate real wages with the price level, you automatically get some kind of hyperbolic relation. So the idea here is simply to get from the price level to real wages. Because then in the lower left, we have a part where wage and labor interact. And this is the labor market. So here, we directly see how the labor market is linked to the ISLM model. And we can also use this model here to discuss what happens if for some reason we do not have any equilibrium, any domestic equilibrium in the context of the ISLM model anymore. What then happens with the labor market? Or the other way around, if something happens in the labor market, what or how can this be reflected in the ISLM model? We can also use this model to discuss what happens if we actually enforce changes in the ISLM model, for example, via fiscal or monetary policy. So this is a, an interesting expansion of the ISLM model into different aspects of the economy, linking this to the production perspective, the production function, and in particular, the labor market. Well, that's the only thing I wanted to add here. 
then, well, that's basically everything there is to simply having the ISLM model as a combination of IS curve and LM curve and the intersection of both the domestic equilibrium. As I said, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I say goodbye. See you next time.